السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد We praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless all the previous messengers including Moses, Jesus, David, Solomon, Dawood alayhi salatu wa salam, Ibrahim and all his children. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them all and may he make us from amongst those who can benefit from the lives of the prophets and may he make us realize and understand the gift that we have being the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We also ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless the family, the household of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and at the same time all his companions and all those who struggled and strove through the years in a way that today the deen is with us. Brothers and sisters in Islam, indeed it brings a smile to the face to see the faces that are smiling, mashallah. And when I said that I see more faces smiling, alhamdulillah. That's the impact of the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You smile and others smile. It is a sunnah. It is a rewarding or rewardable deed. Something that we take for granted. A lot of the times there are mu'mineen and sometimes people who are quite conscious about their link with Allah, but they forget to smile. And yet that is one of the sunan, one of the traditions or ways of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that really has such an impact on humanity at large that it breaks a lot of ice. It automatically creates a link and a bond of humanity to start with. And thereafter it propagates the deen without a statement. Subhanallah. I have seen it. And I'm sure you have as well. And if you haven't yet seen it, then you will see it, subhanallah. You've got teeth, don't worry whether they're straight or not. Mine are not that straight. But nobody notices, subhanallah. It's just you. When you look into the mirror and you say, okay, that tooth is this way. So you... <laughs> don't worry, smile, give it broad. We all have something wrong with our teeth. Allahu Akbar. Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa what a great impact. And I decided to start with this because we are speaking of the impact of the character of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's important to know his teachings have such a great impact. And today inshallah we will spend the next 45 minutes by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala going through some of the impact that really people felt around Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And not only that, but those who follow his example, the impact they create by Following that example is such that wallahi it leaves behind a warmth in the heart of anyone who interacts with them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we heard yesterday, I had made mention of how he spoke to his wife Khadija binti Khuwaylid radiallahu anha when he received revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What type of a person was he before revelation? Before revelation. He was an honest, upright man. We heard that he was a sadiqul amin. So much so that he left such a big impact upon a female who was older than him, whom he worked for or did some business dealings on behalf of. And this was Khadija. If you know the history, and I'm sure we as Muslimin would definitely know it, when he was sent to Asham, the Syrian region, the Palestinian Syrian region, with trade for Khadija, he came back with every single, what we would term penny, accounted for. Every little droplet was accounted for. And the trade was done in such a way that the profit was far greater than when anyone else did the same. Subhanallah. He was honest. He, 
his dealings were such that he was considerate of the buyer when he was selling and considerate or he, when he bought himself he knew he had to give that man a slight bit of a profit and at the same time bargain in a way that he would earn and gain for this particular person he was working for honesty and as a result this woman who was much older who had been previously married decided to take a chance what was the chance i'm sorry to call it take a chance but in today's world it would be allahu akbar wow young man extremely good looking subhanallah what honesty what uprightness what a person his speech no vulgar words this was before nubuwa before prophethood no vulgar words he does not drink he does not sit around people who have bad habits look at the character of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam you read about him before prophethood he never took part in anything that would have placed a scratch on his slate subhanallah he did not mix or associate with bad people not at all so this was noticed and it was noticed by everyone and this lady says you know what i think it would be good for me to put forth a little proposal of marriage through someone and that's exactly what happened you know today if you had a 25 year old subhanallah and uh, upright person never married before and uh, you know so honest uh, business a person who's really uh, good character and conduct and you have a woman previously married uh, children involved and so on who's much much 15 years older perhaps uh, i think it wouldn't be really in the mind of such a female or a sister to even try their luck i didn't i say that moments ago to even try their luck but this was something divine the impact was such that she said let me put this forth do you know what happened it came through allahu akbar he accepted it why that's the impact of his character he married based on goodness piety uprightness he too noticed the uprightness in khadija bint khawailid radhiyallahu anha amazing and people go around saying oh muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam married because of this and that na'udhu billah mentioning some bad points no look at what he did in the prime of his life when he was a man his first marriage take a look at how it worked and what happened do you call this man a womanizer allahu akbar astaghfirullah may allah protect us all from such blaspheme and he chose someone who really brought about a lot of comfort in his life look at the choice brothers and sisters how do you choose your spouse people are looking at me i think a lot of them are already married <laughs> mashallah you've chosen inshallah but be a means of comfort for one another getting back to the impact made look at it it was such that thereafter subhanallah this muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam had children from the same female subhanallah and he treated them what we would say like gold amazing you know going now into nubuwa i just i'm just fast forwarding it a little bit his grandchildren it is reported that on one occasion he kissed one of his grandsons and nearby was a certain man al aqra ibn habis a certain man and he says you kiss this little child how can you kiss your child you kiss this grandchild because at that time they did not used to show that affection to the children the girls were looked down upon because they were considered a sex or a gender that was not meant to be something that was a disgrace to the people to this day you have some people across the, the globe when they are told of a female they are upset you know you having a female a girl wallahi thank allah smile mashallah i have four daughters and two sons may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless those without children with children and may he bless those who have sons with daughters and those with daughters with sons it is allah and he chooses he decides allahu akbar but at the same time he looks and he says he asks or in fact this man says i have 10 sons or 10 little children i've never kissed any one of them Do you know what he says man la yarham la yurham whoever does not show mercy will not be shown mercy powerful words whoever does not show mercy shall not be shown mercy that means a kiss 
on the forehead or the cheeks or on this little child or grandchild of yours is a sign of mercy. Have you understood it? It's a sign of mercy upon your child. How many of us are prepared to kiss our children, our grandchildren, to hug them, to embrace them. They need it. Subhanallah. Today, psychologists and PhD holders, we talk about them again today, mashallah. They, they would tell you how important it is to embrace the child, to hug them, to give them the feeling of belonging. Whereas the impact of the character of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam already has placed that within us. If we are following the sunnah, we would be from amongst those who have achieved this a long, long time ago. Our children feel the sense of belonging. Today you have dad and dad don't want to hug. He don't want to kiss, let alone his children, even his wife. Allahu Akbar. May Allah protect us. Allahu Akbar. See everyone smiling here. Why? People think now I'm old. Come on, I hugged you when I was 20. We're now 50. That's when it all starts. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. and may, may He make it easy for us. This is the beauty of Islam. Look at Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he was granted nubuwa, it did not make him arrogant at all. Imagine if you were told, or if a person, just imagine, because it's not going to happen. If a person was told that, you know what, you are chosen by Allah, to be a messenger of Allah, the most loved of Allah, the highest of creatures or creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, etc., etc. What do you think would be the status of one of us if we were told that? I don't even want to begin to go into that direction. You know, if a person is appointed a king or a leader or a president or an MP or a CEO of a big, oh, you know, company, it automatically, automatically sometimes with certain people makes them develop a chip on their shoulders. You know, they start walking. It's me, you know, I'm the boss. You know. Look at them. Whereas Muhammad Wasallam knew this and he knew much more. And he knew how they treated him in Mecca. And yet he did not respond or retaliate in the same way. He didn't. He responded with kindness, with goodness. He responded with mercy. And this is why Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We have not sent you except as a means of mercy for the worlds, for mankind and jinn kind. For creation at large, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of this mercy. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speaks of how he has been sent in order to confirm and complete the pure and good character and conduct, to teach it, to practice it. And he was one whom, when he taught something, he practiced upon it, so that it could be, it could leave or create such an impact that anyone who wanted a perfect life. All they needed to do was to just follow this particular life. That's why Allah says in the Quran, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ Allahu Akbar. Indeed, for you, in the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is a, a definite example, something to follow, to emulate. For who? For those who are looking forward to the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and looking forward to the last day. May Allah make us from those. You have to emulate, you have to follow. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there is Aisha radiallahu anha, some time later. The way he chose to, to eat with her, the way he chose to speak to her, he had a name, he had a few of these pet names, what we would say a little nickname perhaps, for his own spouse, that was a good name, not a bad name. You know, he didn't use... Bad names, I don't even want to say the bad names, but you know what I'm talking about. People use bad names to refer to their spouses. Oh, that hag, oh, that this, oh, that, that. You know, why? Use the best and most beautiful of words, even at times of difference. Even at times when you are not so, what can I say? When your temperament is not per scratch or up to that. That is the time you use more of these words. They still come inshallah handy and you will be helped just by following the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So he used to use words to refer to his, to Aisha radiallahu anha and to the others. Beautiful names. The impact that left. Wallahi, the love that it created in the home was such unmatched. Subhanallah. Unmatched. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He helped his wife. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon all of them. 
helped her with his hand to put her leg on the hand so that she could get onto the camel, the conveyance. Is it difficult for you to open the door of the car? Not because it's a new vehicle and not because she's just a new bride, but for a third reason. Because you would like to fulfill the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wallahi try it and if, it, if you try it, you will definitely see the impact of it. It will definitely result in something great. Wallahi. Moments ago, Sheikh Dawood, mashallah, jazakallah khair, he asked us to get up and message our parents. Wow, something great. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Do you know that if we were to message our spouses, if we were to message our spouses, Every time we used our phone, three quarters of our marital crisis would be resolved. Obviously a good message. And this is why we say we need to learn this from the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu People think, oh, that was a man in the desert and so on and so forth. Wallahi, the impact created was such without a telephone, without internet, without WhatsApp, without, you know, Twitter, which sometimes causes a bit of a problem. Without, for example, Facebook, without this, without that, without any of these things, subhanallah, you find 2.1 billion people today have been impacted by his character, his conduct, his teachings and so on. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. No technology, no loud hailer, no microphone, no YouTube, nothing. And 2.1 billion already there before the internet came into existence. Do you know that? Look at the impact. What happened? Well, wallahi, there is something about him that if you were to know it, it would impact upon you too. Subhanallah. What a man. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. So people think, oh, he was in the desert and so on. Just to study the romance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam within his own home is a topic that if we were to look into it, it would resolve our marital crises. Believe me, it would solve them completely gone. Are we prepared to look into it? We don't have much time to go into details, but it's up to you to go ahead and to look into the life of Muhammad sallallahu and learn how he treated his spouses. He made sure his family members were fed. He ate something very little. Months passed sometimes without a stove being lit, a fire being lit to cook things. And he was a happy man. With us, we live sometimes in order to eat. If the food is not per the smell or the scent that it's supposed to have had, what's happening here? I'm not eating. Little children, they'll tell you early morning, where are my eggs? If this thing is not done properly. Sunny side up, this sunny side is down. Allahu Akbar. Yeah, it happens. And this is the attitude we're getting. What happened? If we are people who are not fussy about eating, you thank Allah for the food you have in front of you. And the one who cooked it for you, you appreciate. Not only that, sometimes you get up and do the cooking. Wow, where did you get that from? We got it from the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He helped with the chores of the home. And he really helped so much that Aisha radiallahu anha was asked, what does he do at home? And she said that he helps out so much with the work in the home. Salah time comes and he goes for salah, comes back and starts helping again. Wow, this was at some stage, subhanallah. Today is men and sometimes it's the other way around. Wow, no work at all. Oh, that's your job. You're supposed to be doing it. Fair enough. It is done. It is a point of goodness. But have you ever helped, you know, say a weekend, say one meal? Some people, some men cannot cook to save their lives. Whereas the best chefs in the world are also men. You know, we've got to balance the statement, inshallah. So brothers and sisters, let's get to the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Let's look at some more of the impact that he created. You know, in Mecca, and this is a story you may have heard from me again. It brings tears to my eyes every time I say it. And this is going to be something that inshallah will impact upon us as well. Early stages, they used to talk bad about him. They used to really, you know, uh, speak, say things, lies. As is happening today across the globe, people utter words of falsehood. 
Like we said yesterday, because they don't like to read, because they don't like to look into situations, because they don't like to listen to the truth. So there was a lady, subhanallah, once when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and this man is already 40, post 40. He had nubuwa at the age of 40. He's seated. And he's seated. He sees an animal come through. A lady disembarks with some of her own goods. And he decides, okay, let me offer a bit of help. Do you offer people help? Allahu Akbar. Do you offer anyone help? This was a Nabi of Allah, the Prophet, offering a non-Muslim, a mushrika, assistance, because she was an elderly lady. Can I help you with your goods? Look at the impact of his character. Beautiful speech. Today people say, ah, you know, these people, kuffar, so on. Yes, to subhanallah, they might be disbelievers, but what impact are you going to leave upon them with your character and your conduct? Have you learned from the character of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? So he says, can I offer some assistance? Can I help you with your goods? And she looks at him and says, what? People your age, nowadays nobody helps, nothing happens. Nobody assists anyway, I really appreciate it. And he takes her goods and he starts walking with her. And she says, you know, there is a man in Mecca. And he is such a horrible man. He's a magician. He's a womanizer. We've heard he is this. He wants power. He is dividing us. He is talking about gods. And he says, just worship one Allah, the creator. And don't worship any idol. Don't worship this and that. And he is a magician. If you look at him, he bewitches you. And he does this and that. You know, his character... He did not say a word. That was not the time to talk. It's the time to do whatever he was doing. Imagine if any one of us had to give a lift to someone and they jump into your car and you're the CEO of, for example, that business. And the guy says, wow, thank you for giving me a lift anyway. You know what? See that business there? The CEO of that place there is a thug. You know, he's a big thief. He's an operator. He's a criminal. And he's this and he's that. And the word today, what do they use? They say, he's a radical terrorist. Wow. And you're like, whoa. Stop the car, jump off please. That's the bare minimum. I think a lot of people would actually do. And you know what? To be honest with you, the world teaches you that. In fact, nowadays the world teaches you, don't give them a lift, let them catch public transport. That's how it is. So Muhammad wasallam, no. He chose to remain silent. I don't even want to talk about it. Subhanallah, he got to the destination. When he gets to the destination, he puts the goods down and he's leaving. And she says, listen, my son, a question. I forgot to ask you who you are. And she was talking bad about him from point A to point B. All the way. Now she has this question, who are you? You know? And he says, you know, from the time I picked your goods up to the time I have arrived here at your home and left your goods, you were speaking about a man. And you said whatever you said about him. And you said his name is Muhammad bin Abdullah. I just want you to know that I am Muhammad bin Abdullah. What impact did this create? Look at the character. He didn't say what you said was wrong. I'm clarifying my name. I'm this. Subhanallah, that's our weakness today. And sometimes we have to do that. But he says, I'm the man. His character and conduct spoke for itself. She says, if that is the case, I bear witness that you are a messenger of Allah. I bear witness there is none worthy of worship besides Allah. Your call is correct. You are indeed a prophet of Allah. One small statement. I am Muhammad. Why? She saw the man's character. The man was such a powerful man. And she realized this is not an ordinary human being. He's come through without uttering a word. And she accepted the message. I give you another example. Every day in Mecca, in the gullies and alleys of Mecca, you find a lady throwing her dirt at Muhammad ﷺ when he is passing. Throwing the dirt at Muhammad ﷺ when he is passing. And it's full of everything. And it carried on happening every time he crossed that path. And one day, he passed the... You know, he was walking on that alley, and nothing came in his direction. Wow. Imagine this was a woman, a female, an elderly woman. Today, even old woman has to 
throw some dirt at you a few times, I think people would pick her up with one, you know, arm and say, hey, 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 lady, you better watch out, put her down again. Allah protect us. He decided, let me turn back and see what happened. How come this thing didn't come? Look at the character. So he knocks on the door and when he's allowed in, it's Muhammad. Wow, Muhammad, what do you want here? No, every day I pass here, you know, something comes in my direction. Today it didn't come. You know, I thought maybe you're not well. Maybe there is something wrong. Can I do something for you? You know, are you okay? Is everything fine? Everything okay? What? I bear witness that you are the messenger. Allahu Akbar. Statement. Done. Over. Take a look at the impact of this character. Amazing. And this was a non-Muslim he's dealing with. People who are not only non-Muslims. An enemy. Someone who is harming and trying to inflict on him some form of harm that would embarrass and degrade him. Yet, he knew that, look, you know what? I need to rise above all this. I need to present the beauty of Islam. I need to help wherever I can help. And I need to show what Islam is all about. It is about helping one another, respecting one another, character and conduct. Anas bin Malik radiallahu anhu, who was serving Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for more than 10 years. He was serving him. Do you know what he says? He says, I served Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 10 years. Not one day did he say, Oof, for anything I did. Nor did he say, for anything I have done or did. Why did you do this? He says, in fact, he continues, he says, you know, one day I was young and I went, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told me to go and do something in the market. And as I went, I met a few friends, I saw a few young people and I decided to play with them. So I began to play, you know. And a while later, I, someone tapped me on my shoulder. I turned around and I saw it's Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He, subhanallah, two narrations. One narration says that he simply told me, have you forgotten? And he says, no, I'm going just now. And he says, later on I went. And another narration says, he looked at me, he tapped me, he asked me a question, and he went forth and did it himself. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Today, if someone is serving you in your home, how do you treat them? How do you treat them? I can give you an example of Zayd ibn Haritha. He was also serving Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was given to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and he was freed by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and his parents came to take him. And he says, I am not coming with you, I want to stay here with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Imagine, subhanallah, a slave whose parents have come now to take him back, to take him away, to say, hey, you know what, you've got your freedom, let's go. And he says, hang on, I'm staying here. The impact of this character. You live with someone, you know them. Amazing. This is why we say, when you have the Muslim brothers, mashallah, you know, with a beard and so on, and you watch them walking, if they are living the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with their spouses, any female across the globe who witnesses how they are with their spouses will wish to have a spouse just like that. Subhanallah. The way they would treat their wives, their children, the way they help, the way, you know, the, the love, the affection, the dedication, the trust, and, and the, the sincerity and so on, the good words, and not only that, subhanallah, the focus. We are focused. Bring up your children properly. If you are not focused, you are not following the example of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa He was focused. And one of the amazing things that Allah chose for this powerful, powerful man, was that he was to be born an orphan. And a little while later, he was to lose his mom. You see, these difficulties make a person strong. They shine up that diamond. They shine up the gem, begins to shine. A little while later, he lost his grandfather. A little while later, he had prophethood and so on. He lost that uncle of his who was a pillar of support. A little while later, or at, at the similar time, he loses that wife who was the major pillar of support. 
And then he decides to go to Ta'if. You know, to spread the deen. And you know what happened there? The people had heard so much about him, negative. So much negative information about Muhammad wasallam that the people of Ta'if had heard. They decided to throw stones at him, send their children out to chase him and throw stones at him and to swear him and to chase him away in a way that he was bleeding. And the angels came to him and told him, we are the ones in charge of the mounts, the two mountains here. If you instruct us, we will crush these people. Subhanallah. If you instruct us, we will crush these people because of what they've done to you. And at that moment, he decides to raise his hands and he says, Allahumma, inni ashku ilayka da'fa quwwati. Oh Allah, I complain to you regarding the weakness, my own weakness. Ya Allah, I am a weak person. I complain to you. And he was a strong person. Look at him. He's looking at the weakness. Ya Allah, you put on my shoulders this message that I need to convey. And these people are not even listening. Not, a, not even one of them. Nobody. And this is what they've done. And instead of saying, okay, crash them, which I think a lot of us would probably have thought, if not did. You know what? He says, Oh Allah, guide my people. They don't know. Oh Allah, guide my people. They don't know what they're doing. Guide them. And he says thereafter, Ya Allah, if you haven't written guidance for these, then guide their children, guide their offspring. In his lifetime, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he saw the victory of Ta'if. In his lifetime, he saw the people of Ta'if entering Islam almost wholesale. Subhanallah. Later on, many years later. Yet had he made a dua, crush them, they would have been crushed. They would have been history. And it would have gone down in history that there was a prophet who prayed for the crushing of people and they were crushed. No, that would have gone down in history. But what went down in history is he did not, he chose not to pray for their destruction, but rather for their guidance. Today a small thing happens and we pray for the destruction of this one and that one and that one and that one. How dare we don't learn from the example of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And say, oh Allah, guide them. Believe me, people are being guided. Moments ago, I received a message of an image of a person who was responsible in one of the European countries to challenge the Muslims and to make their lives difficult in every possible way. I don't know if you've heard the name Wilders. Well, his deputy became a Muslim. And you know what? Yesterday he was in the Rawdah in Medina Munawwara reading Salah. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. How he accepted Islam? Only Allah knows. But these are the enemies of Islam. Very, very strong enemies. And Allah guided them. This is why Allah says in the Quran, عَسَى اللَّهُ أَن يَجْعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ وَبَيْنَ الَّذِينَ عَادَيْتُمْ مِنْهُمْ Allah is all able and capable to create love between you and those whom there was enmity between. Allah is all able and capable and Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. You know the impact of the character of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the day of Fatih. You know what that is? In fact, let's speak about something before the day of Fatih. Khalid ibn al-Walid. Khalid ibn al-Walid was a man who had caused a lot of destruction against Islam. He fought and he fought so much. The battle of Uhud, you know what happened. He caused the death of so many of the Muslims. From amongst them were those who were most loved by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa family members as well. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one day speaks to the brother of Khalid ibn al-Walid. And he says, where is Khalid? He has not yet come to embrace Islam. So the brother says, he is in Mecca. Perhaps he may come. 
Allah will bring him forth. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, مَا مِثْلُ خَالِدٍ يَجْهَلُ الْإِسْلَامَ A man with the intellect of Khalid cannot be ignorant of the purity and correctness of Islam. Imagine, this means anyone who is very intelligent and would like to research, and would like to search for the truth, they will never be misguided. They will be able to learn that the truth is in fact within this deen. And sometime later, Khalid ibn al-Walid pitches up in Medina Munawwara, and he, knowing that he was such a criminal, he still knew that these people will treat me fairly and with justice. He walks up to Muhammad sallallahu and he has a question. What is the question? Oh messenger, I have caused a lot of destruction. I would like to enter the fold of Islam. But what is going to happen to me? What a question. Powerful question. You know the war crimes that people are guilty of and so on. And some countries have had reconciliation and they have had an amnesty and what not and so on. Islam, the Prophet ﷺ gave the answer to Khalid ibn al-Walid. He says, Ya Khalid, O oh Khalid, you know what you've done, you know everything that has happened has happened. Inna al-Islam yajubbu ma qabla. Islam will delete, the fact that you're embracing Islam will delete all the bad of the past, gone. We will not talk about it again. We will not hold you accountable for something you have done prior to the entry into Islam. He says, Ala dhalik, upon that condition, I utter, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasul. He entered Islam. And he was known as Radiyallahu an. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. The, the, the love that was created just by that shahada. You know, it brings me to some of the YouTube clips I have seen myself of people who've said the shahada. And they tell you the minute we declare this deen, the minute we declare the shahada, we are completely rehabilitated of our bad habits. They are gone. We don't need any rehabilitation. The fact that we've uttered the shahada was enough for us to feel the coziness, the comfort, the ease and the beauty and the link with our maker, the spirituality so high that we have never looked back. Allahu Akbar. This is true Islam. Take a look at the victory of Makkah. Muhammad ﷺ marches on to Makkah. He marches on to Makkah with all his men. And at the same time, remember just a few years back, they had Hudaybiyah where they were banned from entering Makkah. And they were stopped from going for a pilgrimage for the Umrah. They were blocked. And news had come through of the killing of Uthman. That was just a rumor. And whatever happened thereafter happened. They struck a treaty in Hudaybiyah. And the, the head of Quraysh or the people of Quraysh came back and said, Look, you are saying Muhammad, messenger of Allah. Take that out. You're not a messenger according to us. So the Sahaba were upset. And Muhammad wasallam says, No problem, take it out. What's important is the deal we're striking. Look at the character. Then he says, they said, if anyone from amongst us comes to you, you send them back. And anyone from amongst you comes to us, we are not going to send them back. Anyone will tell you that's unfair. He said, no problem. Allahu Akbar. Because he knows the strength of Islam is such that those going back would either be nil or far less than those who are coming in to it. So he said, no problem. That, that's okay. Subhanallah. And there were so many other points that were made that were unfair, he agreed. Thereafter, Islam spread the most at that point, more than it ever had before. So something negative happened, and out of it, the positives that came out were unmatched. Islam spread far and wide. Letters were written across the globe. And you know what happened. Some of them responded positively and some negatively. But that was an opportunity. That was the impact of the character of Muhammad wasallam. He struck treaties even with his enemies. So victory of Makkah as he's marching in, the enemy, those who had massacred them, those who stole their wealth, those who had killed them, those who had really taken away so much of their whatever they had, those who tortured them, were now being faced by the Muslim army marching into Makkah. And Muhammad makes an announcement, whoever puts their weapons down, we don't fight them. 
Whoever enters the house of Abu Sufyan, they are safe. Whoever enters the place of worship, they are safe. Whoever is not going to fight, they are safe. Whoever enters their own house, they are safe. And so on. We're not going to harm anyone. Then he enters Mecca. And he makes an announcement to the people of Quraysh who are standing in front of him. Ya ma'ashara Quraysh. Listen to the impact of the statement. Ya ma'ashara Quraysh. Mada tadunnuna anni fa'ilun bikum. O people of Quraysh. They knew what they did. O people of Quraysh. What do you think I am going to do to you today? Imagine. They were at his mercy. To be honest with you. He could have instructed anything. Today the world powers get hold of one guy. They will probably rip him to pieces. Look at Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No, what he did, he got hold of all of them, the whole lot. And he says, what do you think I'm going to do to you today? He did not say, enter Islam. He didn't say that. They said, we hope goodness. We are hoping goodness. Because they knew he was a good man. They knew he was honest. He was upright. They knew he was straightforward. You know what he says? اِذْهَبُوا فَأَنْتُمُ الطُّلَقَى you can go free, all of you, every one of you. You are free completely. No retribution today. I tell you what the Prophet Joseph told his brothers. There will be no retribution today. You are forgiven. It's gone. It's over. Allahu Akbar. They had not yet entered Islam. But that gesture of goodness resulted in the bulk of them declaring the Shahada. Wow, what a man. We have killed the family, stolen the property, done so much evil and bad and harm and so on. And here is the man himself, the day of victory of Mecca. He is telling us that we are not going to retribute. There is no retribution. We are not going to now come in revenge. You are free. You are set free. And there you are. This man is indeed a messenger of Allah. He is a noble man. A creature unlike the other creatures of Allah. So they declared a lot of them. We bear witness that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah. And we bear witness that you are the messenger. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Look at the impact of the character of Muhammad wasallam. So if you take a look at this life, the beautiful lifestyle, you will find that Muhammad wasallam was a just man. He was so just that... Even with the non-Muslims, whether they were Jewish or Christian or idol worshippers, the mushriks, he was very just. He treated them fairly. He was never unjust. Wherever possible, he overlooked and forgave. And he did that. And it's his seerah, his life is full of it. People today pick on certain points and they twist them and they make it seem that this man, Muhammad wasallam, was a criminal. He was a bad man. He was this and he was that. Yet, if the same people have to open their eyes and look at the reality, their hearts will be softened to the deen. I tell you why. When Allah has chosen a messenger, Allah chooses the best. If you take a look at other scriptures, they speak of bad habits of some of the messengers. Islam disagrees with that. In Islam, we say they did not have bad habits. Allah chooses the best for the message that He has to be conveyed to the rest. Remember that. Allah chooses the best to convey the message to the rest. Allahu Akbar. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa He being chosen by Allah, the best from amongst us, chosen in order to give us the message of the Maker, definitely by reading His life, it would impact upon any heart on the globe for as long as you are looking at it with the correct eyes and the right intention. There you are. The minute you have the wrong eyes, the wrong intention, the wrong heart, you will never see the goodness. But if you have the right eyes, you have the right heart, you will immediately notice that this man was someone we need to emulate, we need to learn from. If you take a look at the impact of the character of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Take a look at Thomas Carlyle and what he said. Take a look at, for example, Bernard Shaw, George Bernard Shaw, what he said. Take a look at Mahatma Gandhi and what they said. Not to say it's important what they said, but it is witness of non-Muslims of our age who did not accept Islam. But they are telling you, the man was indeed a very, very noble man. 
of the highest character and conduct and we would love to have read more and more about his life. Amazing. You just need to Google what I said and you'll find it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us such that we too can create an impact and we can leave some form of, you know, a, a, an impact upon those we meet, those we interact with. But to begin with, our own family members. I always say, and I always repeat this to myself and others, what is the point of creating an impact with the rest of the globe when your own family thinks low of you? When you don't treat them properly? When you don't have time? When you cannot message your wife romantic messages? And yet you want to speak about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? When you cannot speak to your children, when you are far away from home and speak to them, make the time to talk to them and say, you know what, I miss you, I love you, and so on. When you do not have the time to resolve matters and problems within the family, yet Muhammad ﷺ had the time to resolve matters even with the enemy, he struck treaties, subhanallah. These, these are the things we need to take from the life of Muhammad ﷺ. And obviously everything is worth taking. We have to take absolutely everything. But the character and conduct is something we lack sometimes. People think, you know what, I'm a Muslim. I read my salah five times a day. And I pray, I've, I dress appropriately. I don't listen to music. I don't, for example, I, I don't drink alcohol. I don't visit the clubs. But you know what, if your character stinks, you're a smelly Muslim. Yes, I've said it in the worst possible way, but it's a fact. Nobody would want to associate with you. Even if you read your salah in the first saf. Why? Your character. That's why. Build it. You understand. When the Prophet ﷺ, and this is the last thing I'm going to say for this evening, inshallah, here in Hong Kong. When the Prophet ﷺ was asked by his companions, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, paradise, everyone wants to get there. Yes. So he was asked, what are the main reasons that the people who will be granted paradise will be granted paradise simple question what are the main reasons i want to know he just said something simple taqwa allahi wa husnul khuluq piety and good character what else so your piety is one thing your good character is another together they will take you to paradise do you know that Taqwa Allahi means the consciousness of your maker. You need to be consciousness of your, conscious of your maker at all times. That will drive you to paradise. And you need to have husnul khuluq, the best of, of character and conduct. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ spoke about how the best from amongst us are those who have best character and conduct. Those who are best to our family members, best to others. The most, the, those who benefit Everyone else the most are the best from amongst us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and may He make us from those who earn paradise. For indeed, if we were to follow the character of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his teachings, we would be an asset to the Muslims and the non-Muslims and all the creatures around us as well. We would be an asset to absolutely everything around us and we would definitely lead a life full of happiness and contentment and we would die also with a smile preparing to go to the Akhirah and to Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all. And it was very, mashallah, very, very nice to be here in the city of Hong Kong. I wish that my trip could be long, but because it's Hong Kong does not have the term long in it, it's not Hong Long, so I need to go inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. Until then, wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah bihamdih, subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayki.